that uh, programs federal funding for surface transportation projects on Oahu. Uh, so if you if you want to get a project funded uh, using federal funds, it's got to be in the tip. And then what the state does is they take the tip and they put it into the STIP, the statewide transportation improvement program, and that's what gets used to to obligate that uh, federal funding. It's a four-year schedule of surface transportation projects. The project must be in the long-range plan, the ORTP, in order to make it into the TIP. Uh, the TIP must be fiscally constrained. It's not a wish list. It's not a dream. Uh, we, we, we approximate. Uh, we know how much money we have. Um, and uh, we can't spend more than what we think we're going to have. Um, so it's, it's, it has to be realistic and achievable. Uh, programs, uh, federal funding, and the projects have to be ready to go in order to get into, into the TIP. So there may be, there's lots of projects out there. Uh, there's projects that are, that are worthwhile. But if they're not ready, uh, they don't usually end up uh, inside the tip. Overall, uh, for this draft, uh, 15. So this is 2015 to 2018. For this draft, there's about 650 million dollars for highway projects and 3.75 billion dollars for transit projects. And we'll talk more about that. Is that a you decimal probably, point or comma? You can probably <laughs> guess. No, that's three. Is that's 3,000 million. Oh, 3.7 okay. billion dollars. Oh, okay, 3.7 billion. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, there are some general programs. Uh, we don't necessarily program every single little project. Uh, there's a certain scale to it. Um, so uh, bridge and pavement improvement projects, uh, we just put it all under this sort of one umbrella, and then uh, we let the pavement management system and the and the bridge inspections sort of dictate where that money gets spent. Uh, Thirty-six point four million dollars per year. The freeway service patrol, three and a half million per year over the four years. Guardrail and shoulder improvements. On this is for the state, uh, five point seven four five million over the four years. And uh, so that's that per year. That's over the four. That's over the four years. These are per year. This is for the total for the four. And then intelligent transportation system operations and maintenance, two hundred eighty-five thousand per year uh, for the four years of the tip. I should point out that uh, staff is here as well, so if you ask me a question I can't answer, I'm going to look at them and hope that they can answer it. Um, and Chair, do you want me to, to well, let's keep going unless it's a real burning question? Yeah, so. Okay. Uh, recreational trails, 359000 per year over the four years. Uh, bike improvements for the city and county, $8.57 over the four years. And this handy little, uh, uh, the details in here. The, uh, um, if you go to our website, and I, I have the link at the end here, you go to the website, you can download the full draft document, and it will show you some of the details within these larger umbrella projects uh, where we know we those details. Oh, we also have some on the table, or at least one on the table. So if you want to know which bike improvement projects are scheduled, you can look in the document and it will tell you, at least to the extent that we know. Some of it is still to be to be determined. Bridge inspection, nine hundred thousand per year for the city and county, and computerized traffic control systems, four point seven million over two years, starting in twenty seventeen. Related to ITS and the traffic management center. Traffic improvements, sort of a general uh, general uh, um, sort of project uh, at various locations, eight point. Two seven million over the four years. Uh, traffic signal optimization. So this is timing the tra traffic signals to allow platooning and, and better flow of traffic. Seven hundred two thousand in 2017 and 2018. And then installing traffic signals uh, at various locations. Sixteen million over the four years. Traffic signals are really ridiculously expensive. You wouldn't think they would be. They're just lights, right? But they're really very very expensive. Uh, Farrington Highway, uh, some bridge replacement projects. Um, you can see them here. Uh, the, so what I've done here is this is the year of, of uh, programming. So that's not necessarily the year of construction. This is important. That's the year of obligation, the year when the funding will be obligated. And then this is the amount of uh, funding that uh, is being uh, requested through the TIP. Um, so and then uh, right, ROW is right of way. And you'll see later uh, some projects say CON, and that's construction. So 
uh, at Uehava Stream, this 2017 allocation for 585,000 is just for purchasing right of way. It's not for construction. It's just purchasing right of way. And then 2019 is the construction year, but 2019 is technically not in the tip because this is the 15 to 18 tip, right? So that's just sort of out there uh, for your information. Freeway management system on H1, H2, and the Moana Lua freeway. Uh, closed circuit television cameras, vehicle detectors, cabinets, and communications equipment. Again, related to ITS, performance monitoring, uh, and the, traf and the uh, traffic control center. Uh, just about $19 million over uh, the four years of the TIP. For H1, <coughs> uh, safety improvements. Uh, Palalai to Waiava, 2016, $4 million. Uh, bridge rehab at the Kapalama Canal, 2016, $5.4 million. Guardrail and shoulder improvements, Kapiolani to Ainakoa, 2016, $6.37 million. And then guardrail and shoulder improvements, Mill Street Punch Bowl, 2016 for $5.5 million. Uh, lighting improvements on H1. Uh, Kaimakani to Middle Street, Phase 1, 2016, $7 million. Kapolei interchanges, uh, just under 58 million over the four years. So this covers these three interchanges, the Palailai, uh, Waikea, and the Makakilo. The bulk of that 57 million is for Waikea, and that's construction. I'm looking for someone from the DOT. That's, so uh, that's construction. And then the other 800,000 for Palailai and Makakilo is mostly design work. So that's, construction is always much more expensive. On H3, uh, seismic retrofit, um, 2016, uh, 1 million. You can see the, the bridge and the interchange there. Uh, H1, H2, H3, destination, destination signage, upgrade and replacement, 2016, for 3.26 million. Uh, Kalaniana Ole Highway, bicycle improvements, Waimanalo Beach to Kainoa Beach, 2016, for 2.75 million. Uh, Cal Highway br bridge replacement, uh, $10 million in, in 2016, and this is the bridge right here. Operational and safety improvements, uh, 2015 uh, for 918000 And you can see the, the limits there. And then Cam Highway, lots of bridge replacements and rehabs uh, on Cam Highway. Uh, and I won't go through all of them, uh, but you can see them there. Again, uh, ROW is right of way, CON is construction. Um, and so you can see the phasing of them. Uh, for uh, this, this one, for example, 2015, 275,000 for right of way, and then 2017, 6 million for construction. Um, so I'll give you a second to look through all of that. And then the second slide of Cam Highway Bridge Rehab and Replacements. Pre ROW is pre right of way. You can see how that's uh, how that's uh, coming out, and then rockfall protection at Waimea Bay, uh, four hundred seventy thousand in twenty fifteen for right of way, and ten million for construction in twenty eighteen. Also on Cam Highway, safety improvements. Uh, Kahikili to the vicinity of Waikane Valley Road, uh, one point six million for construction in twenty fifteen. Shoreline protection at Kaaava. In fact, I think this picture is Kaaava. Uh, $10 million, you can see why we need it. Uh, Punalu'u, uh, shoreline protection, 2018, $7.35 million. And then a wetland enhancement project at Ukoa Pond, uh, $6.5 million in 2018. This is actually uh, one of the last pieces of the uh, Halava Bypass, uh, I'm sorry, Haleiwa Bypass project. Uh, there was some uh, wetland enhancement that had to go along with that, so that's that, uh, that piece of it. Kualakai Parkway extension uh, from Kapolei Parkway to Roosevelt Avenue in 2017 for 17.7 .7 million. That's for construction. Uh, Leeward Bikeway Phase Two uh, from the Hawaiian Railroad Society train station to Lualualei Naval Road 2016 uh, pre-right of way and in 2018 right of way. So no construction uh, within this tip. Moana Lua Freeway. Uh, guardrail and shoulder improvements in 2016, $6 million for construction. Uh, seismic retrofit at the 
uh, Pu'uloa separation and interchange in 2017. So the two pieces together are about $10.5 million. Lighting improvements from uh, Halaba Heights to Middle Street and then Halaba Heights to H3. Uh, so the first phase in 2015, second phase in 2016. Sand Island Access Road uh, Truck Way Station. Uh, design and right of way in, in 2015 and construction in 2017. And then the Alapai Transportation Management Center, uh, $23 million in 2015 and in 2016 for construction, and in 2016 an additional $1.7 million for equipment. This is, I think this is the Toronto Transportation Management Center. Um, lots of equipment. <laughs> Uh, lots of electronics and computers and things, so you can see where that, that money is probably going to go. And then 2017, uh, a little bit of money for design, construction, and equipment um, for the Alapai Transportation Management Center. Farrington Highway improvements, uh, phase one, Fort Weaver Road to Copper Lake Golf Course Road, uh, $40 million between 2017 and 2018 for construction, and Copper Lake Parkway. Uh, from Kamakila Boulevard to Fort Barrett Road, $50,000 for design in 2015 and $1.2 million for construction. So this is this is the piece of Kapolei Parkway, Fort Barrett Road is over here, and uh, this is Kamakila. And you can see it's, whenever Google Earth took this picture, they were already working out there, so I'm guessing it's just the last piece of that. Yeah? Okay. Uh, Makakilo Drive Extension. <coughs> 2016, $3 million for design, and then the Waiopio Point Access Road, uh, various improvements, drainage, parking, uh, bike ped, $158,000 for construction in uh, 2015. The bus, elderly and disabled, uh, it's funded at about $1.1 million per year. Uh, agency provided trips, about $1.3 million per year, so this is um, the city encourages human resources agencies to provide trips for their clients rather than pushing on the handy van. Uh, so that's that funding. Bus and handy van acquisition, about $25 million per year. Um, and, a, and a bus is $600,000 bucks each, about. So for a 40-foot. For a 40-foot, yeah. Uh, bus and ADA improvements, about $600,000 per year. And then bus stop site improvements, 4.4 million over the total four years of the uh, of the tip. Local shuttle service uh, in 2018, 239,000. Uh, Middle Street Intermodal Center, uh, 10, 16.3 million uh, over uh, three years. Mobility management, 650,000 per year. About preventative maintenance to keep all those buses running. Uh, between 47 and 50 million per year over the four years, and then transit safety and security 416,000 uh, per year. And then, last but certainly not least, the Honolulu Rail Transit Project. Uh, in 2015 2016, 2.2 billion billion dollars, another 800 million in 2017, 435 million in 2018. And I heard a rumor that. This past weekend, Dan Grabowskis saw Godzilla and decided that the train should be Mothra-proof. Isn't that right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you haven't seen the movie, Mothra Destroys the Train. Yeah. I'm not giving anything away. You knew there were monsters, right? <laughs> Destroying cities. So the train gets destroyed. Um, so here's where we are. Public and Intergovernmental Review uh, began May 6th. Uh, the Intergovernmental Review ends June 20th. The Public Review ends June, July 3rd. This document is available on our website. We're not asking for approval. This is just for your information. We want you to look at it, provide us with your comments. The approval process, uh, the TAC will look at it about the week of July 7th, and the Policy Committee will look at it about the week of uh, July 14th. And that's it. That's all I have. Good. We'll have questions later, because Mike is here now. <laughs> Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> That's okay. Well, we'll come back to that, but since Mike Formby is here, I'll take him and let him. I'll show you. I'll show you. The reason I quit. Yes, you're on the agenda. Let's see. 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 Let's see.
Yeah. Of course, you can throw anything else you want. Transportation up. With the advertising on the side? Yeah. No, we took those off. <laughs> They're no longer city buses. Okay. Those are the new ones. So. <laughs> so, my name is Mike Formby, and I'm the director of the Department of Transportation Services. And I was asked to give a briefing on Bill 69, bus advertising, and then also to talk briefly about handy vans. So I think you all know that Bill 69 is uh, still at committee, still at budget committee. And uh, it, you know the indication from Chair Kobayashi is that it will probably be deferred uh, till next year, but we don't know yet because we haven't had that final committee hearing. So we sort of wait to see. But I did want to just uh, go through a brief PowerPoint that we've been sharing with communities as we've tried to engage them in the conversation about what this was all about, just so you all understand where the mayor and I were coming from. So historically, the buses did have advertising on them. This is back from the 1950s. And really my point here is that some people say, once you open the door, you can never shut the door. And the answer is you can always shut the door. You know, you can allow advertising. And then one of these days, if they started down a path that we didn't like, um, you could undo what you do. So it was undone in the past. Now we have no advertising. Another, another photograph showing bus advertising. That's a long bus. Yep. So proposed Bill 69, it basically was us responding to community requests for more service improvements. And that's, that's pretty much universal throughout the county. There's nowhere that we go from Hawaii Kai to Nanakuli that community members don't come to us and ask that we make bus service improvements, whether it's reducing headways, which means adding a bus to the route. You can't reduce bus headways if you don't add bus service, or you gotta cut the route, one of the two. We don't typically cut routes, so we would have to add a bus to the route. Um, the mayor's preference was not to raise bus fares. If you look at our fares nationally, from what the transit rider pays, 250, we're near the top. If you look at what the system takes in on unlinked passenger miles, which means you're counting each time somebody boards a bus. So if they make three buses to get to their destination, that's three trips. If you divide the number of trips by the total revenue that we take in through the fare box, we get 72 cents a person. And that person may make three trips, so they pay $2.10. But that's one of the lowest in the nation. So it depends on how you look at it. $2.50 to the passenger rider is near the top. $0.72 cents to the system is near the lowest. The mayor's preference was not to raise fares to improve service, so we were looking for an alternative source of sustainable revenue. And it was really trying to find money to do more transportation equity. And what the mayor focused on as we traveled throughout the county was the people who don't have cars, <coughs> who don't have the ability to get around but for bus and handy van. I mean, that's, that's really their livelihood. If they have to go to the doctor, when they go to work, when they go to provision their homes, they use bus, they use handy van. And for those people, service improvements mean everything. And so I give examples that people have given me. You know, if, if, if you rely upon the bus to get around and you've got to go to the doctor because you're running a fever, you've got to go to the doctor, sit at the bus stop, wait for the bus, get on the bus, you do that with a fever, unless you have a friend that's going to pick you up and take you. And so we're trying to make bus service improvements, and that whole concept is called transportation equity, which means you're trying to make the system more robust for the people that rely upon it for their livelihood. So we propose bus advertisements as a sustainable source of revenue. Bus advertisements, by definition, by legal definition, are not billboards under state law. So we never propose changing state law, which was another piece of mis misinformation that was put out, that we were trying to change the law. The state law already provides for advertising on the sides of vehicles that are used to transport goods or people, which is why you see it on private industry. You know, Pepsi, beer, it's all out there. You've seen it on the side of uh, the trolleys, on the side of uh, Polynesian Adventures. They all have advertisements. It's not illegal because state law says as long as it's on the side of something that has a primary purpose of transporting goods or people, you can do it. So we weren't proposing a change to the state law, but we were proposing a change to, to city ordinance because it said only interior advertising. And if we want exterior advertising, we just change the ordinance and say we want exterior advertising. So we proposed it. It was never about advertising for the sake of advertising. The first group we met with was Outdoor Circle, the very first group that the mayor brought into his office and said, I want to do this, and I want to do it not because I want to advertise. And the mayor knew he had written the op-ed many years ago opposing advertising, but he said, now as mayor, I have to listen to all the people, not just to my client. 
I have to listen to all the people. And as we travel throughout the county, there's a need for a more robust bus service, and it costs money. So right now we pay about $230 million a year for the bus service. And we say, unlike building a bridge or building a highway that's here for 25 or 30 years, bus, every year you write a check for $230 million and it's gone. That money's gone. You spent it. And now you need $235 million the next year and $240 million after that. I mean, it just never stops because it's driver intensive, collective bargaining, pension, health, all of that kind of stuff. So we're trying to find a way to, to bring in revenue. We know it's not popular with everybody. We understand that. Rose Poe, one of my good friends over there, always testifies against Bill 69 after I testify for it. <laughs> but I still respect her because she's entitled to her own opinion. But I want you to understand the reason, the reason for the proposal. And so what we did do is we went and looked at what the market rates are on the mainland, and we know what one ad on one side of the bus gets in those markets. We picked the lowest four-week rate, and then we took less than the full fleet of buses to basically come up with what we thought our projected revenue could be system-wide for that one ad. And we did it for three different types of ads, three different sizes basically, king, queen on the sides, and those are the market rates, 2.4 million gross, and then the tail on the back of the bus and what it could raise. And basically when we put it all together, we said we could raise somewhere between six and eight million gross. And we said we hoped to raise five to six million net. And then we got criticized for being overly, overly optimistic about the five to six million, that maybe we would get less than 50%, we'd get 40% or 50%. But my attitude was, why would I want to go out and say, I only expect to get 50%, and if this passes through council, and I go out for a competitive RFP, what do you think number I'm going to get? If I said, if I told everybody ahead of time, I think I'm going to get 50% of the revenue, do you think they're going to come and offer me 75? So we put in a number that we think is, is you know, maybe, maybe not that conservative, but it's what we want. We would like to get 75% of the money back when we put this out on the street for an RP, which means we hope to bring in five to six million a year. That's the goal. Whether it does or not, I don't know. But we've said even if we got two million a year, we would fight for two million a year. <coughs> because two million a year would bring back Route E, full restoration of Route E, which is about 1.5 million. So that's the, that's the, I guess that's the rationale for Bill 69. Do you have any questions before I talk about Andy Ben? Yes, sir. Are you looking at doing the windows also? The no. Machine? So we, we, we submitted a friendly amendment to the council that said no wrap, wraparounds, which goes across over the top, around the back, none of the, none of the wraps, no bus wraps, no transit centers, no uh, bus stops, no bus benches. And it only applies to fixed route buses, doesn't apply to handy van, and it would not open the door for rail. So the hard board would have to do its own thing on rail, we're not opening the door for that. There's something else. There's a hand over here. Okay, go ahead. I got a comment that bus in, that you show in your first picture. Yeah. At that time, the, the 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 speed of traffic was 25 miles an hour. No problem looking at at at, at the at the ad and whatnot, right? Now the buses go on. They got the express bus going, the H1 and and. Now, the speeds is now not instead of 25, 30 mile an hour, it's 45, 55 mile an hour. And I've seen people rubbernecking to go read, you know, Robert's Hawaii and whatnot, and as soon as they pass it, they, they, they speed up. And you know, so they're on the H1, and, and then they want to look at the Polynesian culture, and they physically hit their brake to go look at it to see something on it. So my concern is, is, is it going to be a deterrent, you know, like texting and whatnot, so people are going to be distracted from right. their primary purpose of driving and trying to <coughs> look and crash into something else? Right. And so I've heard, you, I've heard you give that testimony before, and I, don't, I appreciate it. I don't have an answer for it. I think there are a lot of other ways that people are distracted when they drive, like you said, texting, going through a drive through eating a hamburger and drinking a Coke while they drive. I mean, you see it all. I, I sort, another one. <laughs> well, I, I, I think you just have to weigh things. Life is about balancing. And, and like I said, I look at it from the people out there that walk a mile or two miles to get to the bus, 
or the people that have to leave 30 minutes early because they have to transfer when they shouldn't have to transfer. I wouldn't mind some people rubbernecking. I hope they never get into an accident, but you've got to balance. Mm -hmm. And so if you were in my shoes, in the mayor's shoes, and you were out and you were meeting with these people who told you about their needs, I think you might do what we do, which is way on the side of the people that need the service versus somebody who's going to rubberneck at an ad. Because the truth is, people look at everything. They look, they look at the mountains, they look at the ocean, they look at everything. A car goes by, they like the car, they look at the car. So we just try to balance. But I understand, I'm not, I'm not diminishing your concern, I think it's a valid concern. Okay. There was another question down here. Right. Mike. Yes, sir. Okay. Your bullet number five, I believe it stated, bus advertisements are not billboards. Now, even though English is my second language, I take, I take things literally. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to me why bus advertisements are not billboards? Yeah, because the definition of a billboard is a fixed advertisement on the side of the road. Okay. So whether it's on the side of a building or whether it's a standalone advertisement on the side of a road, that's the definition of a billboard. Okay, thank you. Now, so what, can you then explain? Tell me exactly where that law that you referred to during your presentation is that says that it is legal for the buses to run ads on the side or on the back. Yeah, I can get you that site. The HRS site, Hawaii Vice Station, I can get you that. Because my understanding was that you could advertise as long as you're advertising the company that owns the vehicle. That's what some people say, but the law doesn't read that way. The law does not say you must be the owner. In other words, it has to be your delivery truck. The law doesn't say that. Okay. And the reason why I'm asking the question is because I have attempted for two and a half months to find the law, and nobody can find it. Yeah. So because maybe later we can hear it. The law that says what you said is not in writing. So I'll get you. <laughs> then, then it's not a law. That's right. There's no law that says you can only do first-party advertising. The law simply says...